still stepping. I'm still stepping, still stepping, still stepping. I'm still stepping. Though the roads get rocky, the hills get steep. I can't run, I'm gonna walk, I can't walk, I'm gonna creep. I'm still stepping. I'm still stepping, still stepping, still stepping. I'm still stepping. Hello everyone. Welcome back to the Talk and Step Show. My name is Derby Walker, the author of this book right here. There's always a light, the journey of a warrior. And today I just want to welcome you all back. You know, if you never tune into this show, welcome. You know, I'm by myself today. You know, my daughter and my co-host, she's, you know, out there stepping on her own journey. So you know, I'm by myself today. And today, you know, is a special day. We're going to talk about love. And um, this series, I'm going to call this series a declaration of love. I want to declare to you my love for all human beings. No matter what race, religious belief, sexuality, age, gender, nationality, or social status. I truly believe we are one people, and God loves us all, and I love us all too. This decoration is the outcome of my true feelings of love, which goes back as far as I was a little child. And as I documented in this book, there's always a light, no available on Amazon. You know, you could go read about, you know, what I'm about to talk about. I'm just gonna to talk to you about how I come up with this decoration, right? It took a lot out of me to say what I just said to you. You know, because I know, you know, in society today, it's just everybody of their own feelings, man, and their own beliefs and their own take on what love is. And I'm gonna to try to, you know, I'm not gonna tell you what love is because, you know, I really don't know. I know God is love. We can't talk about love without talking about God because God is love. You know, so always remember that. And I'm not here to tell you what love is or how it should be for you. I'm going to talk to you about my experience of love and how I feel within myself. And I hope that you could get something from it or it might just enlighten you. And, and you probably can relate to what I'm saying and be motivated and, 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 and be, be braver just to, to live in your truth. Because that's what this is for me today. I'm living my truth, and that's why I come up with this decoration, just to let the world know where I'm at and how I feel. As a kid growing up, as far as I can remember, you know, I was born and raised in Jamaica, and, you know, in a little neighborhood on the north coast of Jamaica, you know, they call it country, you know. I don't know what's their definition of country, because my neighborhood is really, you know, we, you know, it's like a little city to me. I love it, right? So my love started from a childhood, from a little, from, a, from as, 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 as far back as I could remember myself as a kid, a baby. You know, I, I, as I stated in the book, I grew up around love. I grew up around real love. My, my, my mom and my dad it started with my parents. You know, as I stated in the book, my mom is a Christian, devoted Christian in the church before I was born. So love was always instilled in me. You know, I was taught from a young age to love, to love people. You know, I go, yeah, I go to church in Sunday school, we're talking about love. One of the one of the Bible verses that I'm pretty sure that a lot of us like get to know like from an early age is God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We were saying that before we even understand what it meant, right? So within the church circle, it was love. It was, it was about love, loving people, right? And on the other side now, my dad. My dad wasn't in the church. My dad was outside, you know what I mean? My dad was, in the, was a street dude, you know? So my dad, on that side now as a street dude, he was still instilling love in, in, in us as children. He was still talking to me about love, about loving my mom. You know, I'll never forget that. I put it in the book. You know, that time when my dad sitting down in the car, me and my dad sitting in the car, a little kid, and he telling me, yo, no matter what you do, 
Always love your mom. Remember your mom. You know, remember your mom. Never forget about your mom. Don't care what. Always love your mom. Never forgot that. Right? And just being around my dad in the streets, my dad would just, it was, my dad, you know, he operates off love. He get along with everybody. My dad get along with everybody everywhere we go. And another thing is I used to travel. I used to travel a lot. And that helps to build that foundation of love within me as a kid. You know, in, in the country, not, not a lot of people have a car back in those days. So I was fortunate that my dad had a car. So my dad used to like take us places and my dad drive a truck. My dad go all over Jamaica, you know what I mean? Paving road, make, they, they building roads all over Jamaica in some of the most rural parts of Jamaica. My dad go to, to, to fix roads and stuff like that. So I had the privilege to travel with my dad. You know, I go to places in Jamaica where the people look different. The people, they speak different, you know? And I would just see, watch how my dad operates. My dad live in Kingston. My dad live in Kingston. So my dad, the way he oper operate around the street dudes, the gangsters, you know, the, the police officers, the business people, my dad would just move around, just get along with everybody. And in the church, we used to travel, as I stated in the book, I always got to go back to this book. All that I'm talking about is in this book. So when you get a chance, please go and get it. It's on Amazon. And you could read more about what I'm saying. You could have a better understanding where my love comes from. Okay? It comes from God, but on earth where, it, you know, where I put it together for myself to get my own understanding, okay? So my mom, in the church, they travel. They travel all over to the different churches. It's a body of church all over Jamaica, different churches all over. So we would travel to the different churches. So now I'm getting to meet people on that level too, all over, different people. So, you know, I, I had a privilege to travel and see the different people and, you know, get along with people. And, and then again, in Jamaica, in my neighborhood, I'm from the north coast of Jamaica. You know what I mean? So it's a tourist area where there are the tourist resorts and, you know, all that goes on, right? The scenes. So I grew up around people from different race. I grew up around Chinese talking like me. I grew up around white people speaking like me. Indians. So, you know, growing up, everybody is just one, you know what I mean? And as a matter of fact, the Jamaican motto, out of many one people, we're one people. And it makes sense to me, you know what I mean? Because I don't know the color difference. I don't know your hair look different from, we're all Jamaicans. That's how I'm looking at it. You know, we, we, you know, it's all love. So, you know, my first love started now for the love of the people in my community. That's where I found like my first love. So now that I'm traveling all over Jamaica, my community, it was like, man, I love my community. There was nowhere else like my community. All the places that I've been, I've been to, I always think back about the people in my community. And, and sometimes it's just like in a really touching way because I would go to Kingston and I would see how these people are living, you know, and I go to this area, I go to different areas and I see how all these people are living and, and it's like, my neighborhood was like a more poor neighborhood, you know, it was, you know, poor people. So I, I developed now this feeling like I want the people in my neighborhood to live like this. I want the people, I want the kids that, you know, that I, be, that I play with, I want them to be able to go to Kingston too. You know, because a lot of kids in my neighborhood, they didn't get to travel. Like, how, you know, like I would leave and I would go to all these places. Some kids never leave the neighborhood. Very rare they would leave. You know, but I was getting, I was traveling. So I started loving my neighborhood like a, like a, a special feeling for my neighborhood. Right? We're talking about love right now. And, and, and I'm not, I'm just talking to you from my heart. You know, I don't have a speech, you know, on paper or nothing. I'm just talking to you. So, you know, hope you get something from it. So, starting from my neighborhood, you know, my, it, it, my neighborhood, you know, it's, um, I mentioned it in the book, right? 
Jamaica is controlled by, by politics, man. You know what I mean? Like, very strongly. Everything goes down to politics. So, my neighborhood was aligned to, you know, one of the political parties, like oh, most neighborhoods in Jamaica. It's one or the other. And, and and that's why I love the color green, as you can tell, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm a green guy, you know what I mean? My color is green. And the green thing started from there because the political party that my neighborhood is aligned to is green. So... I started like liking, loving that party because it's not the party, but it's that they the only ones taking care of my neighborhood. As a, and I'm talking about I'm a little kid. I don't even understand politics, you know. But it's just like your parents. You grow, you grow up seeing your parents. They're the ones that are taking care of you. You develop that love for them because they're the ones that's taking care of you. So it's the same thing that I'm feeling now. This political party is the party that's taking care of my neighborhood. So now I'm loving this party. You know, I care less about the other party because they're not taking care of us, all right? So from there, you know what I mean? I start dealing with the people in my neighborhood, man. Like, I, 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 I like being around the people in my neighborhood. And, and remember, my family, my, I grew up in a Christian home. You know, we pretty much just go to church and come home and stay away from all that other stuff. I'm not allowed to go walk all over the place like a lot of the, lot of the other kids. You know what I mean? I can't even leave my yard. You know what I mean? So as I got older, I started, you know, getting involved. I'm, I'm speaking up how I feel. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm acting how I feel from within. I end up being labeled as a, 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 as a black sheep. You know, black sheep, I don't know, you know, because I'm different. But it was all love. It was all love. I, I, I couldn't explain it at that time. I can't explain it. I just know that I love these people. I don't mean nothing bad, nothing. I don't, I don't want to get involved. I don't want to get in no trouble. But I'm just loving these people, and I just want to speak up for them. I want to defend them. As a young kid, that's how I feel, Right? We're talking about love, my declaration of love for people, all people. That's what we're talking about right now. But I'm trying to explain to you where it, where it came from, where it started. So as I got older, you know, as I got older, now no one can understand me. Not much people understanding me right now, you know what I mean? So things not going well, you know, my parents don't understand me. Like, why am I aligning myself with all these people? You know, people that don't understand me, they want to hurt me. You know, a lot of it goes back to the politics because now I'm defending this political party. But it wasn't about politics for me. It was about my people, if you understand what I'm saying. Anyway, it caused, you know, there's danger with all that. But I was not, I was never scared. But anyway, my parents... They don't like it, you know what I mean? I'm putting myself in danger. I understand now where they're coming from. They got to get me out of there. So, you know, long story short, like I put it in the book. It's in the book. They sent me to America. They sent me to stay with my uncle, like in the book, right? So now I'm in America now, right? I'm in New Jersey. Now I start looking around. I start meeting other people. I'm starting like, I'm still, I'm still the same person. I got that love inside of me. So now I'm here, the love is still there. So now the people that I'm around, I love people. Now I'm loving these people. I'm getting to meet more people. People from, now I'm more, I'm exposed more now to different religions. Because you know, in Jamaica, it's mainly Christianity. And the Rastafarians. That, that, that's like the, you know, the, 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 the two set of people that I knew when I was in Jamaica. Like, I get to be around. You know, they got, you know, it's basically all Christianity. And, 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 and in Jamaica, the Rastafarians, I'm around them. You know, and in Jamaica, I sit around as a kid. I used to sit around with the people in my neighborhood, man. And that's one of the things that sometimes even my family couldn't understand. People in the neighborhood couldn't understand. You know what I mean? I sit on the beach with the fisherman, old guy, older people. I'll just sit there with them and talk with them till late night. I'll sit with the gangsters and we just chill and I'm there with them. I just love people. It don't matter who you are. I just love being around people and being with people that I love, right? Now, I used to sit around with some Rastafarians too. And I'm thinking to myself, 
They remind me of, the, of some of the Christians that I know. Like these guys are peaceful, man. These guys are, are, are talking to me. They preach in love. They got some differences in their beliefs, but man, I, I, I feel like, yo, I see where they're coming from. And I feel like they, they're right. They, it's the same thing. So, so now I, I'm in America now. I'm meeting Muslims and I'm meeting Jews and I'm meeting Hindus. I'm meeting people. And one thing that I notice, there is good people everywhere I go in all religions. So now I'm getting to like really, really understand. And I'm really feeling like, man, listen, there is good people in, in, in all religions because I'm around Christianity, right? And there is bad people in Christianity that I know. And there's a lot of good people in Christianity. So now I'm looking at it like it's not even a religion. You can't just say I'm a Christian or I'm a Rastaman or, or, or I'm a Muslim and that makes you a good person. Now I'm starting to feel like it's who you are as a person and what you do, your life that you live. Because now that I'm older, now that I'm older, I, I, I practice I practice my spirituality spirituality to Christianity because that's that's what I know. I grew up, you know, reading the Bible, so that's the, that's what I know. So that's how I practice mine. But I don't feel like the other guy, the, the other guy don't practice it the way, no. If a guy grew up around the Muslim religion, most likely he's probably going to be Muslim. He's going he's gonna to practice his spirituality to the way he know, you know? A guy grew up in India around the Hindus, you know, he's going to most likely practice his spirituality to the way he knows. That's just my feeling. We're talking about love, right? So I'm not here. We're going to talk about religion another time. I'm just touching on that to let you know that I love people. Don't matter your beliefs, your religious belief. It don't matter your race, right? Like I said, in Jamaica, I grew up around white people, you know, talking like me. Or white people come on vacation and we talk, you know, especially as kids. They talk to us and, you know, sometimes give us a couple of dollars, we take pictures and that's how I know it, you know what I mean? And I'm growing with just love of people. Listen, I grow, I got older and I got to understand, I got to understand my history and the history of the whole race thing and, and slavery. So I know that and I understand that. And in my book, I talk about my experience with racism. You know, I talk about it in my book, so I know it's real because I experienced it. I experienced systematic racism and I experienced individual racism, like people, just, the racist people, you know? And then I realized that too is on all sides. I know my history, you know what I mean? And, 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 and just like I believe in ra that racism exists because I experienced it, that's the same way I, I, I expect other races to understand what like black people went through is, as, as slaves. Because it's real, you know what I mean? I'm not gonna treat you bad or hate you because of what happened or how I'm treated by individual or the system. I'm not gonna treat you that way as an individual. Now, I love you. Even the guy that treated me wrong, in my heart, I love him. It's like I feel like, yo, it's a misunderstanding because, you know, in my high school in Jamaica, in my high school in Jamaica, the high school I went to, I put it in the book, the motto of my high school is ignorance enslave, knowledge liberates. And since my high school days, man, it stuck with me. And like I said, the older I got, the more I started to understand what it meant. When I was back in the days when we were saying it, I was just saying it, but then I start understanding ignorance and slave. You know, so a lot of these people that acting racist and treating us wrong, a lot of them, they don't know better. And that's one of the reasons why I'm talking. The show is called Talk and Step because maybe I could help them to enlighten them. You know, how some, some people feel how I feel. I love you. I'm not going to hate you because of the color of your skin. I don't expect you to hate me because of the color of my skin. Can't change it. 
And I know you can't change who you are, man, but you can be a better person. We all can be a better person because we're supposed to love each other. Right? So I experience racism, but it don't matter your color, your skin. I've never, at no point in my life, feel like I hate a group of people because the color of their skin. And that's my truth. And I'm declaring that to the world, to you right now. I love you, right? Sexuality, sexuality. That's a very hard, like, it, that's very hard. That's, the, that's a, a topic that not much people want to touch. But today, I sit here right now on this show, on this Talk and Step show, and I'm going to tell you, I love you. I, it don't matter your sexuality. Whatever you choose to do, that's on you. That's not on me. That's on you, man. I'm going to tell you how I feel, and I'm going to express to you my beliefs, but I'm not going to hate you, though. Because remember this, just like I tell you about the Christian and the, the religious, the old the religion thing, the different religions. If I'm a Christian and I feel like Christianity is the right way, right? I'm supposed to be talking to you as a Muslim or a Jew or a Hindu or a Buddhist. I'm supposed to be talking to you to try to get you to understand what I'm saying and to try to get you to believe what I believe, right? Isn't that the way? But growing up, it's never that. The people on the streets are more together than the people that's in the religion, in the religious groups. You already see a Christian sitting down and having a conversation with a Muslim. Like a good conversation. And both of them get up and understand each other and respect each other. And it's all love. You already see that, man. And that's how it's supposed to be. It's one God. It's one God. You know, you see it through this religion and that. That's on you. But we're supposed to be communicating our feelings to others. And that's what I'm doing today. I'm communicating with you how I feel. I have nothing against no human being about their sexuality. That's on them. And that's how I feel. This is my truth to you. I never had that feeling in me. Never. Oh, I'm going to hate you because you choose to be gay. No, listen to me now. Get me right. I don't believe in it. I don't think it's right. But I don't think there's a lot of things are right. Same thing with me. There's a lot of things that I do. You know, I talked about selling drugs before, right? I talk about selling drugs before, and I talk about how it's like one of the worst choice a decision I ever made in my life. And you know why? Because it goes against what I'm talking about right now. It goes against my love for people. When I look back and I'm like, I'm selling something to my people. I'm wearing a gloves. I'm wearing a mask to handle this stuff, but I'm selling it to my people. I beg God for forgiveness. I ask God to forgive me. I ask society to forgive me, right? And that's, it goes back to love. It goes back to what a person choose to be, who a, uh, who a person choose to be or what they choose to do. Oh, I'm going to hate them. If I feel like you're doing something wrong or your choice is wrong, I'm going to pray for you, but I'm not going to hate you. I'm going to pray for you, man, and I'm going to hope that one day you see it, the light or you see it my way. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. But I'm not going to hate you, man. That's on you. Because you know why? I did some wrongs, man. And I'm pretty sure I'll be doing some more wrongs. I try not to. But we're human beings. How can I point my finger at you? How can I hate you because of you, you, what you choose to do with, with yourself? That can't be right. And I never felt like that. And I'm letting the world know. Your sexuality, that whatever you choose to do is on you. I love you, man. And we could talk. I'll talk to you. I'll tell you how I feel. I expect you to respect my feelings. And, I, and, and, and just, just the same way as I expect you, I'm going to respect yours. You respect mine. It's all love, though. It's all love. Because I can't be here asking God to forgive me of wrongs that I've done and choices that I've made and, and, and to, to help me and remove my shortcomings and my bad habits when I'm here beating somebody down. 
I was never that kind of person, man. I get along with people from a little, from a young age. At no point of my life, I ever hate a group of people. Believe me, that's from my heart. And if you read my book, you can understand. And anybody that I've been around, from the kids I went to school with, to the people I work with, to the people I associate myself with, I'm pretty sure they could testify for me, man. I never go out of my way and treat nobody wrong, man, like that, man, because of what you believe, man. Nah, I was never that person, and I'm declaring that to you today, man. I love you. I love all people. We're talking about love, right? And I know I'm going to be over the place a little bit, but I'm just talking from my heart. It's real talk right here. Try to pay attention to the message, right? We're talking about love, true love, my declaration of love for all human beings. That's what we're talking about. Remember, we're talking about kids. Oh, man. I got to realize that a lot of hate and anger started from baby, from a little baby, from kids. We're born pure, man. We don't know nothing about hate, man. We don't know nothing about hate. We're born with love, pure. And we pick it up. We pick up all these different things. Society try to put us in different boxes, different groups. In Jamaica, I seen, I seen people treating people different because of their skin color. We're all black, but, but it's the black, it's the darker one against the light skin. As a kid growing up, man, in school they used to call me the tar baby because I was like real dark, man. Tar baby, that's what they called me. I was called that a lot of times, man. <laughs> Be looked down on because I'm, I'm darker shade of black than you. So that's what I'm saying. It's all over. It's all over. It's, it's this street against that street. It's uptown against downtown. It's this political party against that political party. And now I'm growing up, man. I'm getting to understand. You know what I mean? Like I said, with the politics in Jamaica. Yo, this guy over here is supporting that political party because that's how he's surviving. That's who's looking out for him. And this one over here supporting this one, not because he hates you. It ain't even about politics. It's a survival thing. And I got older and I get to understand it, man. But it's all love. I mean, some people get carried away and never got out of it. But thank God, man, I'm, I'm, I'm enlightened and I'm thankful, like I said, for my parents that used to you know, take me to different places and I'm traveling and now I'm in America. I'm, I'm learning. I'm seeking more knowledge now so I'm getting to understand. So this, I'm, I just did, I'm not making this decoration. I didn't make this, not even, last year I didn't make this decoration. I just came up with this. I just sit down, man. I, I, I'm thinking, I talk about cancer. We'll talk about that later, but, you know, that's later on. But now I'm, I'm, I'm I believe in this, man, wholeheartedly. So now I can stand in front of the world and I can tell you, I got love in me. I operate off love. I fall, I trip, I get up, you know what I mean? I do wrongs, but it's all love. I love all people. So we're going back to the babies that we was talking about. Thankfully for my parents, I said. When, I used, when they used to pray for me as a baby, I remember some of their prayers was asking God to plant a seed of righteousness in my heart. As a baby, as a kid, like I can remember they saying that. And, as, and now it makes sense to me because I honestly feel like that seed was planted. That seed was planted because all my life I declare to you today. I have love for all human beings. It was always like that. My life been as far as I can remember. It was misunderstood many times back then. And, and just until today, it still, still is. A lot of you all listen to me right now, probably, you know, thinking different. All things going through your mind. But you know what? It does not matter to me. It don't matter to me what another person think of me. I'm telling you how I feel. I'm living my truth. This is my truth to you. As a kid, a lot of kids got hate instilled, planted in them from an early age. 
by parents, by different family, by just adults, unconsciously. Because remember this, just like love, love is love, it's one love. I know we hear this all the time, one love, it's one love. You can't love me and you hate this man. You love that and you hate, no man, love is love. When you find love, when you find love, man, you understand that love is love. There's boundaries. We're going to get to that. Let me stick to this part first. The kids. I've seen parents. You got breakups, divorce. Sometimes not even that. Everything is good in the house. Everything is good in the house. But there's, there's a force. There's two forces in the house. The mom and the dad. It's like they're fighting for likes and for love from the kid. We got to be careful what we say to kids. We got to be careful the seed we planted in kids. We plant a lot of people. We, we unconsciously plant hate in kids. That later on grows and grows and grows. Some of these kids come to hate themselves. Because remember, it's one love. It's also one hate. When you love, you love yourself. And when you hate, you hate yourself. You hate yourself. Because hate is hate. In the house, the mom sitting down, he talking to the kid about the dad. Dad this, dad, dad, dad. dad. Remember now, this kid cannot process all this. This kid, where you're living, you cannot process things. So, you know, you, you take things like really literal. I know I did. The dad... Talking to the kid about mom, mom this, mom that, mom this, mom that. You're sowing a seed of hate in the kid. Breakups, breakups, separation, divorces. Now, sometimes both parents feeding the kid with all kinds of negative things. Who you think you're hurting? I'm sitting here talking to the kid about my kid, about their mother. Who, who am I hurting? I'm hurting the kid. I'm sowing a seed of hate in that kid right now. That will grow. And that kid will come and just hating, hating people, hating, hating themselves. We got to be careful with kids. Thank God for my parents, man. They instill love in me. They sow, they sow seeds of love in me from all angles, from different, just, they, they, call, they live in love. Be careful. We are society. I know, I know, I talk about that in the book. Since my grandfathers and the older guys in my neighborhood, they always talk about the new generation, the young generation. Oh, wicked they are. Generation of vipers. They call them all kinds of names. And today, it's the same thing. People still say the same thing. These kids nowadays. Remember, all this hate these kids are around, they can't control themselves like we as adults, man. They can't. They can't process it. When I was in Jamaica, I'm been involved in politics out of love out of love, but I couldn't process it at that age. So things could get real dangerous. Because remember, when you're acting out of love, that don't mean you're going to do all good things. The love for my community could cause me to do something wrong, could cause me to do something and harm other people. Because all I'm thinking about is love for my community. So now I'm, I'm behind this political party not understanding, you know? So that's what I'm saying with kids. You got to be careful. We're blaming them, but they cannot process things like us as adults. And we as adults feeding them that hate. I'm not saying we're doing it consciously. Most of it is unconsciously. We pass on our own griefs and our own anger and our own hate onto kids. We're telling kids, oh, this one, that one, this, and, and we... And they grow with that. It turns into anger. And they grow, they grow with that hate. And that hate grows and grows. And some of these kids out here as adults. 
acting because the hate in them, it develops and it grows. I'm talking about love, man. I'm not going to spend the time talking about hate, but I'm, it's two sides. So I'm trying to get you to understand what I'm saying, where, how I see it. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so you'll be the first one to know when we drop the next episode of this Declaration of Love series and more. Love, light, and blessings. Keep stepping.